Good morning, church. And thank you for calling me a speaker and not a preacher. I keep telling people I'm not a preacher. So. All right. So question of the morning that I have for y'all. Who in here, right now this is going to be interactive, so I'm going to ask you to you know, raise your hand. Who in here has developed their full potential that God has put them on planet Earth to do? Raise your hand. If you just have maxed out, you've developed full potential. Hey, this is, this is where I'm at. This is, you know, I've maxed out. Raise your hand. Good. That means that we can all benefit from this lesson. Good. Uh, the majority of the people that I'm going to speak to today are going to be uh, believers in Christ. Where we'll have uh, probably a little, uh, a little time for people that are not believers in Christ as well. But hopefully, um, overall, we will uh, uh, encourage you to, one, know that God loves you. Two, tell someone else about that. And three, do things because, not so that. So, what we're going to speak about today, Romans 8, if you've got your Bibles. If you don't have your Bibles, please find one, look on your phone, do whatever you need to do. Romans 8, we're going to do a quick overview of Romans 8. In Romans 8, in Romans 8 we're going to see things like, there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. So we're under grace, we're not under law. Uh, we follow the Spirit, not the flesh. We're also going to see that, hey, He gave you a spirit, and He gave you His spirit. We're also going to see that you are God's, own it, and live it, do things because, not so that. We're also going to see that it's not going to be easy, but it will be worth it, because uh, we will be redeemed. We're also going to see that His spirit will lead us, so He's going to give us some help there. Oh, and by the way, all the things that happen to you that aren't fun, um, you know, God's going to work together for good to work that out for you. We're also going to see that, uh, hey, what is the problem? If God is for you, what does it matter for who's against you, okay? And be convinced that trusting in Jesus is the absolute best thing you can ever do and follow Him. So let's take a peek at Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Uh, I'm going to read, uh, basically we'll kind of read and break it down and kind of go uh, verse by verse. So it's going to be a little bit of reading. Please go along with it. Um, read along with it. So therefore, there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ in Jesus. So stop right there. Sermon's over. Don't worry about it. If you're in Christ Jesus, what do you have to worry about? What do you have to fear? There's no condemnation. Uh, Brother Curtis said that he got a chance to immerse his uh, granddaughter in water. I applaud that. Thank you for making that decision. Best decision you'll ever make in your entire life. There's no condemnation for you. Okay? God's not going to hold uh, any of your sins accountable to you. You're clean. Okay? It's wonderful. So there's no condemnation. So we're not under, not under the law. We're under grace. We're, because Jesus died on the cross, we are free from the law. We no longer have to participate in it. We don't have to worry about it. We're under grace. Now we just understand that, hey... God loves us. Uh, we're going to mess up, but He still loves us. <clears throat> so what does grace look like? I like to use analogies a little bit. <clears throat> Some of you know from my former life, I was around airplanes for a little while. Okay, When an airplane, most of the time, stays off of its course. I don't know if you knew that or not, but the majority of the time reaches its destination. Okay, So if that airplane is one degree off, it's off, it's off course. That's what it is. Well, that's okay. Because a little correction is allowed in there every once in a while. So that's where we come to that continual repentance. Um, just know that sometimes you're going to be off course. There's grace to cover you. You know, be excited about serving Jesus. Verse number two. For the law of spirit of the life of Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For the law could not do, weak as it was, to the flesh. God did, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. As an offering for sin, he condemned, condemned then sin in the flesh, so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Again, we're going to see a continual life. There is a way to walk that's according to the flesh, and a way that, uh, that we walk according to the Spirit. I always want to address that those in Christ Jesus were called to walk according to the Spirit, not the flesh. 
So when you look at things of the Spirit, we look at Galatians chapter 5, the fruits of the Spirit. You know, familiarize yourself with those things, and those are, that's how we know that we are walking into the Spirit, not, not in the flesh. We're showing love, we're showing mercy, we're showing grace. For those who walk according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the mindset of the flesh is dead, but the mindset of the Spirit is life and peace. That's verse 6. Verse 7, because the mindset of the flesh is hostile towards God, for it is not subject itself to the law for God, for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Again, remember, if you're a baptized believer of Jesus Christ, you can please God because you, you are in the Spirit, not in the flesh. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, but if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. So verse number 9 tells us that God gives us his Spirit. Who in here has the Spirit of God within you? Okay. If your hand's not up, you need to put your hand up. You need to find, you need to talk to somebody today and say, how do I get the Spirit of God in me? Because that's the one thing that gives us that leadership inside of us to, to point us into the, the things and fruit of the Spirit, okay? We must have the Spirit of God. We have to have that. It's not anything of ourselves. It's something that God blesses us with to help us to be more like His Son, Jesus. That's all it is. And you think about it, he, He's already saved us, which He has. But He gives us His Spirit, which He does. What is that Spirit here for? When people see Christ living in you, they're going to want to come to Him. Okay? That's the whole purpose of this, this Holy Spirit that He gives us. Christ's Spirit is put into us to tell other people about God. Because, hey, this person is kind to me. He's patient with me. He loves me. He cares for me. Uh, he you know, appreciates me. Um, you know, there's all these things. So when Christ puts His Spirit in you, it's just to reach out. We, we're His message. That's all it is. That's all it boils down to. That's all it boils down to. We're here. Once we are saved, we're here to, to tell other people about Jesus and live. <clears throat> Starting in uh, verse number number nine. So, excuse me, verse number ten. If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Verse 11 to me tells me that I do not have to worry about dying. Uh, people in the medical field, you get to see people die all the time. It can happen to each and every one of us, okay? Uh, we've all lost family members. We don't have to stay dead. When we have God's Holy Spirit inside of us, he will come and raise us from the dead just like he raised Christ from the dead. We don't have to worry about that. You want to talk about some good news? You want to talk about something to get excited about? Something to tell someone about? You know? Hey, you don't have to worry about death anymore. You can live. So how do you live? Have Christ's Spirit. Follow Jesus. Be immersed in water. Choose to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to be sold out. I'm be all in for Jesus. That... Okay, so that's one of the things the world can't promise, by the way. I just want to throw that out. I want you to show, see how different the, the flesh and the spirit is. The, the flesh will tell you if you buy this makeup, you know, you'll look attractive, you know, you do this, you'll be. That's nothing that the world has to offer can raise anybody from the dead. I mean, we have the most marketable product on planet Earth. It's resurrection of the dead. It's eternal life. Okay? No one else can do that. <laughs> Verse number 12. So then, brethren, we are under obligation not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, then you will live. And this is the abundant life. You know? This isn't just living and breathing. This is reaching your potential. You know, again, I asked you when we started this, you know, hey, who in here has reached their potential? We all have room for development. What is God's potential for you? What is his potential for your life? While you're here on planet Earth, what reasons who are you going to come in contact? Who are you going to encourage? What are you going to do while you're here? We look at the parable of the talents. You know, looking back at that, I mean, you've got the one guy that goes and he hides him on the side. 
the other guys, they go and they try to develop. You know, each, each person is given something. Ask God daily to show them. So what's my purpose? You know, what am I here for? I want to develop into that. I want to reach my potential for you. Hey, we've been bought. Blood of Christ. We're not ours any longer, right? No reason to live like it. Go live like you're his, because you are. Right? You've got the greatest message and the greatest thing to share with anybody. If you think you love somebody, go tell them about Jesus, because nobody else can give them what you can give them. That's eternal life. Number 14. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God, for you have not received the spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father. You're saved. What are you worried about? Don't be afraid. Go live it. Go live your life for Jesus. Don't be the, oh, I'm you know, in and out. No, you're, you're saved. He, Christ's blood was sufficient for your sacrifice. Now go live like it. You have nothing to fear. He didn't give you a spirit of, of fear. He said, I gave you a spirit to cry out, Abba, Father. You can call God your Father. Verse number 16, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we're children of God. Hey, I'm even giving you this Holy Spirit. He's even going to tell you that you're God's. Number 17, and if children heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs of Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified in Kind of shift gears a little bit in verse number 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. So, verse number 18, he opens up the idea that, hey, there's going to be some stuff that's going to come your way. It's not going to be great. It's not going to be enjoyable. But, I guarantee you, that whenever you go through here on planet Earth, oh man, let me tell you, it's still going to be worth it. So going to be worth it. Okay? Verse number 18. It's going to be worth it. We will be redeemed. Verse number 19. For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. This next little kind of passage here, I always kind of think of it like this. Like, we're almost seems like we're looking for the next thing. You know, it's the next, my little girl, she turns one. You know, that's a big event, you know. Um, you know, in February it was, you know, my son turning four, you know, whatever it is. Before then, we might have been, you know, hey, we're going to have our Christmas time with Thanksgiving. So, I mean, we live our lives in, you know, in anticipation, if you will, of the next thing, right? It's, hey, this is coming, so we're getting excited about that. But whenever we're there, it happens and then it goes away. Well, it's almost like, well, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't all that. What's the next thing, you know? Well, I'm telling you what the next thing after the next thing after the ultimate thing. When we are standing face to face with the one who created us, our Savior, and we're standing there and we're in his presence, that's the next thing. That's what you're waiting for. If you've ever had that, you know, hey, what's the next thing? You have been created too long to be with him. I don't know if you know that or not, but you have. And one day, it's all going to come to a head and we'll be able to be with him face to face with him. Think about that. How much your, your family and friends think about that? Just say, hey, What's the one thing that you're going to ask whenever you're face to face with God? Yeah, I've got some really, really smart friends. And those smart friends, you know, they'll say, you know, some kind of crazy. Well, I'm going to ask them about, you know, yada, 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 some kind of Old Testament. I will forget. What? Okay. <laughs> That's cool, man. Uh, you, want, you need to know that. That's cool. That's great. I got one thing I'm going to ask. I'm going to say, hey, why in the world do you love me? And then I'm going to let him spend all eternity down in the wine world. Because I haven't figured it out yet. That's the big mysterious thing that I cannot figure out. Why, oh God, do you love me? I think you tell me to. Okay. So, verse number 20. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself would also be set free from its slavery to corruption and to the freedom of the glory of the children of God. 
I kind of like to think when he's talking about the creation of the world, you know, whenever we uh, read the passage where, uh, you know, Jesus is uh, riding in on the, the colt in there, and he said, hey, you can watch him cry out. I, I have to believe that everything in existence, you know, that we look around and we see these trees, these, these rocks, these mountains, and everything knows that God is all powerful. And I think that at some point in time, it will be able to be freed from uh, anything that ever kept it back. You know, I can't go through and tell you that it was you know, absolutely cursed uh, you know, back after uh, Adam and Eve sinned. I don't know, but I can tell you that it's going to be freed from something. It's going to be free to be something more. Uh, for we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth to get together till now. And not only, for verse number 23, and not only this, but also we ourselves having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. It goes back to He created us for more than what we're doing right now. He created us for more than that. Will we fully know what it is you know, on planet Earth? Possibly not. We can always, you know, be working towards that. Say, God, show me my purpose. God, help me develop my potential. But when will we fully know? I think we'll probably fully know whenever we're face to face with Him. Verse number 24. For we hope we have been saved, but we hope, for in hope we have been saved. But hope that is seen is not hope. Well, he hopes for what he has already seen. So, this is just a description of faith in verse 24. Okay? Hey, if I know, if I can see it, then, you know, it's known. But if I don't know it, and I'm just anticipating it, and I'm looking forward to it, well, that's faith. God asks us to have faith in him. What does he have, ask us to have faith in him? Now, this is the little, uh, if you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, I'm going to give you this, this right here, a quick question to hurry. Okay? Our time, right here, Counts that Jesus Christ was on planet Earth. Okay, AD was since He came here. Everything before Him was BC. AD 2022. Every time this clock makes a tick, it's saying that Jesus was here. Okay, if that's not convincing enough that Jesus was actually here, I, I don't know how else I can convince you. But we count time by Him. Okay, He came here. He died on the cross. The reason He had to die on the cross is because our sins separate us from God. He is our mediator. He's the one that gets us to cover it into that salvation state where God looks at us and says, you are my child, I love you, okay? He's not dead. He rose from the grave. He did that when he celebrated Easter Sunday. Uh, that was an empty tomb that they went and looked at, okay? All right, so where's he at right now? He's up in heaven right now, and he's preparing a place for you and me. And what are we doing? Right now, currently, we're sitting here waiting for him to come and redeem us. Uh, if I die before he comes back, hey, I'm going to make it hard on him. I've already uh, tried to work out a deal with my little boy. Uh, whenever uh, they cremate me, I want them to take it, spread me out a little more. That way it's this real big deal to kind of pull me all back together and make me hold it. Okay? <laughs> I believe he can do it, but I think I'm going to do that. Uh, but that's how much faith I've got in my God. He's going to be able to do that. Okay? All right. If you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, come talk to me. We'll come talk a little bit about it, and I'll, uh, I would encourage you to be able to, to adopt him as your Savior. All right. Verse number uh, 26. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes us for growing us to be towards. Have you ever been in the state to where you were so, uh, I guess, Distraught over something you didn't really have to put into words. God gave me the Spirit to communicate with Him. He can do that. He can do all things. He spoke it all in existence. Okay? And He who searches the heart knows the Spirit's mindset. Because my, the mind of the Spirit, because He proceeds for the saints according to the will of God. Now, verse number 28, I will say that verse 28, there was one verse in the New Testament that described me as a person. And what helps me get on with my boots on in the morning is verse 28. Okay? And we know that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. I wish that we had it up here where we could all read it together. Because that is something that you need to read and understand daily. 
Not everything that happens to you in planet, on planet Earth is going to be good. It's not. It's okay. All right? But God can use it and will use it for the betterment of His kingdom. Okay? Not everything that happens is good, but God can and will use it for the betterment of His kingdom. That verse right there alone is the one that's helped me get out of bed uh, more times than not. Verse number 29. For those who before knew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of the Son, so that he would be first, firstborn among many brethren. And these whom he predestined, he also called. These whom he called, he also justified. These whom he justified, he also glorified. He's been planning your existence and planning for you to be part of his kingdom since before you were born. He chose you. He wants you. Then what shall we say to these things? If God is for us, he is against us. Yeah, I love the way that he kind of stops and turns. Okay. So if God's for you, he's against you. Anybody? Else? What do you have to be? What do you have to be disappointed about? Hey, I just told you the one that spoke into existence is the one that we can't find by. He's on your side. He's for you. He's not against you. Okay? Who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us, how will he not also him freely give us all things? Who did give you everything? You're an heir, okay? So what's the problem? What's the problem? What's keeping you from reaching your potential? What's keeping you from going to the next level? What's keeping you from doing what God has created you to do? He sent his son to die for you. He's giving you love and mercy and grace. He feeds you and cares for you and takes care of you. What's holding you back? What's holding you back? He will bring charge against God away. God is the one who justifies. Thank God for that. I'm so glad that God's not judging nobody else. Uh, I don't think anybody else would let me into heaven, you know what I mean? Who is the one that condemns? Christ Jesus. He's the, he's the one who died. Yes, rather than the trains, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Hey, the one that judges you said you're good. The one that, that cleans you said you're good. Okay? He's got a place for you. Verse number 35, who will separate you from the love of Christ? Will tribulation for distress, persecution, famine, or nakedness, or peril, sword? This is in the Greek for your sake. We're being put to death all day long. We are considered a sheep to be slaughtered. So, verse number 37, but in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced, love 38. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creating thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So we didn't miss anything there. Is there anything that we missed out? Is that all of it? I think it is. There's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. You're His, you're bought with the Christ owner. Live like you're free, because you are. Number, verse number 37 through 38, 39, no convention to trust in Jesus. I don't know what to do. It's the best thing that you can do to follow him. Okay. So that was our quick little reading. I know I'm probably leaving the right thing up here. But this is my call to action. Okay. Let's go over again, kind of just a, a quick little review. There's no condemnation in, in Christ Jesus because we have grace. Uh, he gave you your spirit that you can do to reach your potential. Okay. You're God's own it. Live like it, all right? Uh, it's not going to be easy. There we go. That won't be a minute. Huh? Try, yeah, I'm trying to sleep on me back there. I'll see that again here. We'll get only about an hour and a half left. Uh, so it's not going to be easy. But you know what? You're going to be redeemed. And whenever you are redeemed, it's not going to matter how hard it's going to be. I promise you that. His Spirit's going to lead us, okay? Um, by the way, all these bad things that have happened to you, hey, he's got a purpose for you. And you know, it's okay. You just got to trust in him, all right? Uh, so what's the problem? 
that's other question. What's the problem? If he's for you, uh, and, and he's nothing, nothing can really be against you. So be convinced that trusting Jesus is the best thing that you can do in following him. Okay. Now, uh, call to action. Call to action. Um, again, who here has completely developed their potential? All right. Who in here thinks that they could uh, develop some more potential? Can you develop? Okay. Good. Thank you. This guy. I love this guy. He's paying attention. Okay. So to, to develop potential, uh, sometimes the best thing we can do is ask for help. Okay? Uh, so ask for help from God. We're going to ask for help. We're going to pray about it. But that's not all we're going to do. We're also going to take action. We're going to ask God. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to say, God, show me what my potential is. Help me develop into that. Because you know what? We've got one mission on planet Earth, and it's not to remain the same. It's to go out and tell other people about Jesus. Okay, once you're a follower of Jesus, uh, we don't, there is no retirement for Christianity, is there? You know, you're getting retired from uh, nursing, but there is no retirement for Christianity. We always have something that we can and should be doing. Because you know what? It's not about us. It's not about us. It's about those that come in contact. We've got the best thing. We've got the best good news that you could ever imagine. People can be raised from the dead. They don't have to live a life of sin and shame. Okay? All right. So, ask for help. Uh, develop your potential. Uh, now this is from the shepherds to the babes. The new babe in Christ to the shepherds in Christ. This is everybody. Uh, so one of the things that I can think of that, that we can do to develop is develop your leadership skills. Uh, this is going to sound very, uh, I don't know, uh, corporate, whatever you want to call it. But develop your leadership skills. So the leaders, what leaders do is they get people to want to do things, okay? Uh, they don't for, management forces people to do things, okay? Leadership gets people to want to do things. And your greatest thing that you can do while you're on planet Earth is to lead people to Jesus. That's it. Okay? So all we're trying to do is get people to want to follow Jesus. We can't make them follow Jesus. God can't make them follow him, but we can encourage them along the way. So we're trying to develop leadership skills. Now, there are so many secular books out there over leadership, it's unreal, and they're all valuable in my opinion, okay? Read them. They might be really up around the edges. Some of them might be written by Navy SEALs. I don't care. Okay? I don't care. Develop yourself. It might be hard reads, whatever. Just read things about leadership in whatever walk of life you're in. Uh, just develop yourself so that way you can understand that, hey, leading people to Jesus is hard. Okay? Leading congregations is hard. Leading families is hard. Uh, being in a leadership position is hard. That's okay. We're trying to lead people to Jesus. Develop yourself. Dig a little deep. Okay? Uh, get involved with the ministry. Okay? So there's the, the food pantry. There's the great giveaway. I love it. Praise God. Praise God and thank you for every one of y'all that do that. You have no idea. I've been in this community for a few years now. And you have no idea how, how much of a great outreach it is. It's wonderful. Praise God for your loving, serving hearts. It's incredible. You know, hey, if you know feeding people and giving stuff away in your in your forte and the thing that you're excited about, that's fine. Go do something else for Jesus. That's fine. Do it. Okay. I guarantee you, other shepherds are going to go up there and say, "Well, you know, we really don't want you loving on people, you know, uh, by in that manner." I guarantee you, they're going to be supportive. They're going to love and own people and get people involved and share share the gospel with people. That's what this whole deal is all about. Be intentional with your actions, okay? Um, hmm. How many years you nurse? 42. How fast did that get here? Okay. How old is your daughter? <laughs> well, no, I mean, I just look at my daughter. She, and that, that's how fast that's going to happen. Okay. So that's how fast that's going to happen. Okay, so when I say be intentional with your actions, just understand that each of us has a very limited time to plan it out. Okay? We're currently running out of time as we speak. Okay, so the sense of urgency, you know, the things that you thought that you always kind of wanted to get around and do, right now is the time to start doing them. Okay? And we need to be moving forward with this. Okay? Uh, I'm going to go back to using some of these business things to get things done, uh, oftentimes setting goals. Setting goals is, is super important uh, in being efficient with your time and intentional with your actions. Uh, say, say, what's all that mean? Say, if you had uh, uh, part of your ministry was, hey, I want to, you know, I want to go visit more people. Okay, how many people are you going to go visit? I'm going to visit five people a week. Okay, keep track of it. Okay, so smart goals: be specific, measurable, accountable, 
uh, relevant timestamp. So write something down that you're going to improve on. Write something down that you can do that you will that you're going to be able to measure. And somebody that you know and love is going to hold you accountable for doing. Okay. Make sure it's relevant to the goal. You know. Make sure something that you're not already doing. Okay. And then have a timestamp on it. I'm going to you know read this many books by this amount of time. That's how we develop. It. And uh, it is uncomfortable. Okay. So your leadership is going to be uncomfortable. So you have to become uh, uncomfortable. Excuse me, become comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, Acts chapter 14, we're going to read uh, three more verses and I'm going to read Hello? Acts chapter 14, 19 to 20. So the Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, and having one over the crowds, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. And while the disciples stood, stood around him, he got up and entered the city. The next day, he went on to, with Barnabas to Derby. And after they had preached the gospel of that city, they made many disciples, they returned to the Jews and Iconium to Antioch. Okay. So I'm going to be real with you on American Christianity. It's watered down and it's hurting. Okay? I don't know Jimmy Paul uh, in Christian faith today. They dragged him outside and they stoned him. They thought he was dead and he got up. Okay? We're soft. Okay? We're soft. Christianity, American Christianity is a little soft. Uh, it's time to toughen up a little bit. It's time to be uncomfortable a little bit. Uh, people are going to die around us. We go to hell if we don't stand up and start moving towards being intentional with our actions. Okay? They stoned Paul almost to death, drove him out of the city, and he got up and he went to preach the gospel. Okay? That didn't keep him from preaching God's message. So I don't know if there's anything out there that you need to lay on at the cross right now. Who, who stoned you? I don't know what's going on. You know, what's keeping you from stopping and you should go and say, hey, that's then, this is now. I'm ready to go preach and teach Jesus. Whatever it is. Maybe, maybe there is nothing. Maybe you just didn't realize that you were running out of time so quickly. I have no idea. But we have to do that. We have to be intentional or actually do it now. There needs to be a sense of urgency. Don't know if anybody here that uh, doesn't know Jesus. If you don't, I'd love to tell you that. Okay? Um, don't know if there's anybody struggling with anything. Come up here. Uh, we've got shepherds. I'm sure they'll put hands on you and pray with you and love them, okay? But uh, just know that I love you. So does God. So does everybody in here, okay? Okay. okay? All right, let's pray real quick. Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. Father, we ask that you help us see our potential and develop into it. Remove any barriers that might keep us from stepping out of the mile and doing what we need to keep all of us to do. Help us to just dig deeper and understand that sometimes following you is going to be a comfort, but the glory that you have waiting for us because it is a We love you and we thank you. We ask you to bless each and every person in this congregation. Pray that you bless the ministries that they're, they're going through and they're doing and the ones that haven't been thought of yet. Father, we ask you to bless all of them. Bless the young families as well as they uh, uh, raise the future of the church. We love you and thank you. We ask all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen.